Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Hey, it is so good to see you today on this beautiful, sunny Sunday morning. I am so grateful for the sun. I think I say that every week, but I cannot stop being grateful for the sun. Um, hey, I don't have anything exciting really to tell you, so let's just go ahead and stand this morning. If you are watching online, we're so grateful that you're with us today. If you're here in the warehouse, we're so glad to see you. Let's worship the King this morning. Yeah, let's do. I once had a heart that was dead in the grave, found in the darkness a powerless slave. Then heaven reached down from my cross to my soul. Hell started to shake and it had to let go. Yeah, I'll never get over it. I'll never get over it. I was dead in my sin, but your love wouldn't quit, and I'll never get over it. was a prisoner and since heavy chains hell for a debt I could never repay but out of the grave with the great victory he shattered those chains and he set me free yeah. I'll never get over it I'll never get over it I was dead and I'll never get old. But you love 
nothing like your presence, God. Scripture says that a day, a day in your presence is better than a thousand elsewhere. And God, we confess that it doesn't always feel true. I confess that I fill up my mind and my schedule with things that are, are not you. And when I do, I come up empty every time, God, because there is nothing that fills me like you do. Holy Spirit, when we come into this place week after week, we come with anticipation that you will move, that you will refresh and revive our souls. And you never disappoint, God. We're so grateful. So just like the lyrics of this song said, Lord, we want to make room for you to do whatever you want to. We lay everything at your feet. We lay our expectations. We lay our plans and, and our burdens, God, just at your feet. We lay our achievements and our failures at the foot of the cross, and we say, this is all about you, Jesus. There is nothing more important than just being with you and encountering your presence, God. We're so grateful that we get to come together week after week and worship in a corporate place. The energy in this room is palpable and your presence here is tangible, God, and we're so grateful. Jesus, as Stephanie comes and begins to share with us the message that you have given her this morning, would you open our ears and our hearts and our minds to hear from you? Would you open our eyes to see you afresh today? Continue to move to teach us. We give this to you. We make room for you, God. It is all about you. It has always been all about you. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are good, God. You are holy. Church, one more time, can we just lift up that holy, you are holy. not taking this sign down for a while, so get used to it. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Even though it's not Easter, he is risen. Amen. 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 Would you greet someone this morning in the name of the Lord and tell them what your favorite season is. Woo. Thank you, Jennings. Tell them what your favorite season of the year is. Let's see who's watching online this morning. Season of the year. <laughs> what does that even mean? online this morning. <laughs> Good morning, Judy White, my aunt this morning watching online. Good morning, Jaren and Katie Freed from the Freed family. Good morning, Tammy Brandt from Disney. Oh, summer is her favorite. Good morning, Kristen Robinson. Good morning, Christy Ring. Anything with sunshine, Kristen said. Summer, of course. Did anyone say winter? No. Really? Really? Wow. One for winter. One vote for winter. I'm so shocked. 
Well, good morning, family. We're so glad that you're here this morning. If you're watching online, we're so glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us this morning in worship. And sorry that there's no coffee this morning. <laughs> Our coffee uh, machine pooped out on us this morning. We had no warning. And all of a sudden, we were like, well, there's no coffee. So I hope that you stay awake. Uh, but if you don't, I understand. Um, <laughs> just a couple of announcements. We have prayer meetings every Wednesday night this month at 645. There is child care for that. We have a game night coming up on April 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. So we hope that you'll join us for that. And then if you're new here and you've never attended a welcome party, we have a welcome party coming up just for you uh, this today after the 11 a.m. service. So stick around. We'll feed you pizza and cookies and We'll have some yummy drinks, and we'll have some tour of the facilities, and we'll just have all kinds of good stuff for you, Q&A time. So we hope that you'll join us after the 11 a.m. service for that. But we are continuing today in the Secret Place series based off of Matthew chapter 6. We started it last week, and we talked about how oftentimes we think that our secret place is the place that we stash food so that no one sees it, no one finds our Milky Way or our Reese's peanut butter egg, uh, and we have talked about how sometimes <laughs> we, uh, we think our secret place is the place that we go to hide away from everyone in our lives, and, and we found out last week that Jesus actually taught about a secret place. In Matthew chapter 6, he talked about a secret place that we go when we're giving to the needy. He said, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing when you're giving to the needy. Just do it in secret. He said, whenever you pray, don't pray in front of everyone all the time and just pray a bunch of big words so that you look good. Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is unseen in private in secret. And we didn't get to this part last week, but it, it goes on in Matthew 6 to talk about when you fast. You know, don't do it like the pagans do it. Don't disfigure your face and make it so, uh, uh, make it so obvious that you're fasting. Like fast in private, fast in secret, so that it's only your father who knows what you're doing. But here's the, the thing is that Jesus longs for him, for us. Jesus longs for us to join him in the secret place. He longs for us to join him in the secret place all throughout our days. As often as we breathe, that's how often he longs to meet with us. When we're in the shower, when we're driving to work or driving the kids around, when we have a three-minute bathroom break at work or we have a hard conversation and we need wisdom, these are all moments, exact moments, when Jesus wants to meet us in the secret place where it's just us and him. Today we're talking about getting ourselves into alignment with his kingdom and with his will. And I started thinking about how sometimes your tires get out of alignment. And it can, I started Googling it, like what, what happens when your wheels get out of alignment? And it says you're, it can wear out your tires faster. It can lead to poor handling. And it can even permanently damage your wheels. I didn't know all of that. And I started Googling, what happens when your back is out of alignment? Well, you have back pain, you get headaches, you, get, you have difficulty sleeping, you get extreme fatigue. And then there was one thing I didn't have to Google, what happens when your spiritual life is out of alignment? And I started thinking, well, you might feel like God is far away. You might feel like he's distant. You might feel like you're just talking to the ceiling instead of talking to the God of the universe. You might not sense what he's actually wanting to do in your life. Here's the thing is that Jesus wants our lives to be in alignment with the Father. He wants our lives to be in alignment with his kingdom and with his will. So let's read again Matthew chapter 6. We're going to be in this scripture all throughout this month. You're going to get used to it. You may even memorize it. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to start reading in verse 1. I'm reading out of the NIV, the New International Version this morning. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. 
So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be done in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Here's the part we're focusing on today. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you of your sins. Jesus, would you come and speak to us through your word? We believe today that your word is sharper than any double-edged sword that it pierces our hearts, God, that there is truth in here for us to learn today, and we claim the promise that your word will not return void. We just pray that you would bless this message, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So Matthew is saying, Jesus is saying in the book of Matthew, don't be like the hypocrites, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners praying to be seen by others. See, God is not interested in our prayers when they're just spoken to be noticed by others. He doesn't want the prayers that we pray, he doesn't want us praying them just to look like a a good Christian. Rather, he longs for those secret prayers, those prayers that only he and I know about in the secret place. That's why he says, go into your room and close the door and pray to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. That's why this series is called The Secret Place, because we long to impart to each of you that Jesus longs for you to meet him in the secret place. God is interested in our hearts. He's not interested just in our words or just in us looking like we know what we're talking about or looking like a good Christian. He's interested in our hearts. He's interested in what we say that's just between us and him. How would my husband feel if I talked him up to all of you, which I do, and if I talked him up on Facebook all the time, which I do, but what if I treated him like dirt throughout the week, or even worse, what if I ignored him throughout the week? I ignored him in private, and and I I asked myself that, and I I had to ask myself with my relationship with God, I wonder sometimes how God feels when we post about him on Facebook, when we talk about him or to him in our job setting, but when it comes to the secret places in our lives, when it comes to the times that it's just me and him in the room, I wonder how often he's longing for me to start a conversation or to join in with what heaven's already talking about. And I miss it because I'm so preoccupied with other things. I'm so preoccupied with TV, with whatever, like sports, with whatever fill in the blank. I'm so preoccupied with all of these things that I miss the secret places that he's longing to draw me into. Jesus says, do not babble like the pagans. They use a lot of words trying to impress others and trying to impress God. He says, God knows what you need. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. So you don't have to have a Bible degree or use fancy church words to talk to God. You don't even have to use a lot of words to talk to God. In fact, it kind of sounds like from this passage, he prefers less words. He's like, less is more, because I already know what you need before you ask it. Keep it simple. 
I wish I could convey to you this morning just how simply God longs for your prayers. Just how simply God loves to hear from your heart. He wants you and he wants to hear from you in your normal language, not in some churchy language, not in some fancy Bible language. He wants to hear from you in your own language. He loves the honesty of that, just like you were talking to your best friend. If you want to know how to pray, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. But if, I mean, I don't want you to get so bogged down in the formula of the Lord's Prayer Like, if you're just starting out learning how to pray, just talk to him like he is your friend. That's all you've got to do. In your normal, everyday language, don't get bogged down with the churchy stuff and I've got to say, hallowed be your name, and I don't even know what hallowed means. I don't know. Like, we don't even have to go there. Like, just talk to him like you're talking to a friend. Hey, Jesus, this is what I've I've got going on. Can you help me? Man. Man. He longs for those types of prayers. But he did teach us kind of how to pray by acknowledging first who our father is, that he is our father, he is our friend, our provider, our champion, our redeemer. He is the Lord who is in heaven, and his name is holy. His name is set apart. He is different than us, and he deserves to be in charge. That's basically the first part of that Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Psalm 25, 14 from the Passion Translation says this, there's a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh, where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. This psalm is talking about that private place that is reserved just for God's children, just for his sons and daughters, just for those that love him. See, it's our privilege. If we love Jesus and we're seeking to follow after him, it's our privilege to go to him in prayer. It's our privilege to talk to him on a regular basis because we are his children, because we are his sons and daughters. We get to be near him because of what Jesus did on the cross. We get to set close to him. We get to receive revelation promises and secrets from him. Jesus said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean that your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? I think it means a few things things and probably a lot of things more than what I'm going to say this morning, but I think it means that if God's kingdom is really coming to earth as it is in heaven, I think it means the lonely would be put into families, that the sick would be healed, that those in need would find provision, that the anxious would find peace, that the depressed would find joy, that the addicted would find deliverance, that those in poverty would have their needs met, that those who are marginalized would be looked after. What does it mean for God's kingdom to come to earth as it is in heaven? The church exists to point people to the kingdom. The church exists to advance the interests of another kingdom, a heavenly kingdom. We want the earth to be aligned with Jesus just as his kingdom is aligned with Jesus. We want the gathering to be aligned with Jesus just as his kingdom is aligned with Jesus. We want Muncie and East Central Indiana to be aligned with Jesus just as his kingdom is aligned with Jesus. We hear this term, heaven on earth, a lot. Like, what is your heaven on earth? Maybe it's the beach. Maybe it's the mountains. For me this week, it's been birthday cake because my birthday is this coming week. And I'm going to England tomorrow. And I don't know if they have birthday cake over there. So I've been eating it this week ahead of time because it's my favorite thing ever. That's my heaven on earth this week. But this is what we desire, to to grasp onto a little piece of heaven on earth or grasp onto many pieces of heaven on earth. 
And this is what Jesus was teaching us to pray. God, let your kingdom reign on this earth as much as it reigns in heaven. God, rule on this earth as much as you rule in heaven. God, give us, give us glimpses of heaven on earth. We try as a church so often to represent heaven to people. And this week we got to do that in such an extravagant way. I saw um, this past week like a bunch of teachers posting from Southview Elementary, one of our ministry partners, that they really wanted to give out $10 like vouchers to each of their students so that their students could go to the book fair and get something for $10. Many of these students come to school at the book fair time, and, and they don't have any money to spend at the book fair. And you know that, like, if you've ever been that kid, like, that's really hard when all your friends are going. Like, you all go as a class to the book fair, and some of your friends have money to spend, and you might not have anything, and you don't understand why. And so these teachers were asking, you know, hey, could you, they're asking their Facebook friends, you know, could you donate $10 so that our kids could to go to the book fair and pick out something for $10. And I just saw a lot of teachers posting about this because I friended a lot of them at the beginning of the school year. And I was like, man, what if we as a church could donate money to help as many kids as possible get a book for the book fair? And there's like 500 and some odd kids at the school. So that was $5,000 we would have to raise. Well, I put out a thing on Facebook, and we tried to raise some money. We got enough money raised to pretty much half of the students are going to get a book from the book fair. 244 students are going to get a book from the book fair. And I just thought, man, that, that is what Jesus has called us to do, to love extravagantly, to step into those spaces where people need things, and to be the one to meet the need. Like that shows Jesus. And if you go to our Facebook post where we posted about this, you will see the reaction of the teachers. There's like tons of reactions from teachers just saying, this is incredible. I can't believe your church is doing this. I can't believe that you would care so much about these students and about us, that you would want to bless these students. with Like it's incredible the testimony and the witness that our church gets to be in these moments. When we just choose to step into, God, let your, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to love you extravagantly on earth as you love us extravagantly from heaven. Let your love shine through us, Jesus. That's what it means for his kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So his kingdom, we're asking his kingdom to come. Jesus was asking God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. He's asking for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is essentially us saying to God, we don't want our will, Lord. We want what you will here on earth just like it is done in heaven God, let your will, let this be our prayer. God, let your will be done in Muncie as it is in heaven. God, let your will be done in Yorktown as it is in heaven. God, let your will be done in Hartford City as it is in heaven, in Anderson and Marion as it is in heaven. God, we want your will to be done here as a church as it is in heaven. And as I think about Jesus praying in Matthew 6, teaching the disciples how to pray and, and praying for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven and teaching his disciples that I think of what he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. On the night of his betrayal, when he was going to be handed over to death, he was so grieved at the thought of what was coming and he, he wanted God to take this cup of death from him. But then he paused and he said, oh God, but not my will but what you will, let that be done. See, Jesus knew how hard it was to give up his own will. And he was teaching us that as followers of Jesus, as sons and daughters of God, many times are going to come in our lives when we have to lay down what we desire, our will, our way, and we have to just seek his will above all else. We put our will aside 
and we seek what he wants above all else. That's the kind of stuff that God wants us to be about on earth. Not that our will would be done in any given situation, but that his will would be done. As a church, we've been trying to partner with another church called Kirby Avenue uh, in our same city. They're on the south side of Muncie, and we haven't talked a lot about them in a while. We had a Q&A several weeks ago talking about, you know, if you had any questions, because the hope is, and what Kirby Avenue has come and asked us about, is if they could become a campus of the gathering on the south side of Muncie. And you've probably seen, like, Glad Tidings has a lot of campuses around Muncie, and different churches um, have different campuses around East Central Indiana. So, you know, they have one campus, like here on Walnut, we would have one campus, and then we would do a very similar thing there on Kirby Avenue on the south side of Muncie. And we've been quiet about it because we just, we still are really struggling and like wrestling with the Lord. Like, God, is this your will? Is this what you want? Kirby Avenue is seeking God's will. We are actually, as the elders and staff, we're fasting and praying for the month of April to ask God. And we join you in that. Would you fast with us? Would you pray with us? God, we want your will, not our will to be done. We don't want to build the gathering's kingdom on this earth. We want to build Jesus' kingdom. We want to partner with Jesus. We don't care if our name is out there. We want to be, have Jesus' name out there. And so I, that's just an update for you. Like we're seeking God's will fervently to see if Kirby Avenue is going to become a campus of the gathering. And so I just wanted to update you on that because I know I haven't talked a lot about it in a while But that's just an example of one thing that we're saying to God, you know, this would be really cool, God. It feels like you're in this. It feels like this is what you're saying, but we do not want our will. We want what you will to be done. And I know Kirby Avenue is joining in that prayer. You know, there have been many times that I've had to surrender to God's will in my life. And a lot of that has come with dreams that I've had for my life. At one point in my life, right before I came to the gathering as next-gen pastor, which was like nine years ago, I just realized, um, right before that, I was really struggling to find a position in ministry, and I had to come to the place where I was like praying, God, if it's not your will that I'm in ministry, like I did all this schooling, I did all this education, I thought this was what you had for me, but this, if this is not your will, I don't want it. And I had to get to that point. And it was the same with marriage. I had to say, God, if it's not your will that I'm married, I don't want it. And we're in the place right now of trying to have kids. And I have to get to the place of surrendering my dreams for my life and saying, God, if it's not in your will, I don't want it. I want to ask you this morning, what do you need to surrender over to Jesus? What are you trying to get that is really for your will that maybe he's like, I want you to surrender that to me. And I found that many times when we surrender that, he's faithful to meet those desires and needs, but it's not like a magic trick that when we surrender, he will. I think he just wants to see where our hearts are. Do we want our will or do we want his will? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for speaking this morning. We thank you for teaching us how to pray, Jesus. We thank you that you are a God who just wants to hear from your children. You're a God that wants us to say to you, I'm sorry I messed up. Will you forgive me? You're a God that wants us to say to you, man, I'm really struggling today. Can you help me? You're a God that wants us to say to you, I'm really scared about this thing in my life. Will you give me peace? And you desire to meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so, God, today I pray that you would help us to foster that secret place with you this week. Just in our minds right now, God, help us to know, like, where is that place, whether it's in our home or maybe in our car or 
at a park, like some place, put some place in our mind, in our heart, some special place that can be our secret place with you. Give us even the time of day, specifically, God, that you want to meet with us so that we have a plan going forward into this week of how we're going to meet with you. God, if there's something that we need to give up or fast from in this season to really go after your secret place, would you show us what we should give up in order to pursue you deeper, to pursue your presence in that secret place more? Give us the courage to follow through with that, Lord. God, I pray that you'd give us visions of how we can be a part of bringing heaven to earth this week. Show us visions, God, of how we could be a part of bringing your kingdom to come to earth this week. And God, give us wisdom and vision for how you want your will to be done in our lives. If there's things, God, that we need to set aside and give up to you and say, not my will, God, but your will be done. Help us to get to that place of surrender. Because we know that's what you long for from us. We love you, Jesus. Come and do now what only you can do. In Jesus' name. We've talked a lot over the last couple of years here about how worship is vulnerable, Um, and so is the secret place, right? Like if if I'm going to come into God's presence in the secret place, I'm going to get pretty up close and personal. That's a pretty intimate space, Um, and so that can feel kind of scary sometimes. So if that feels like nerve-wracking to you or or uncomfortable, please know, first of all, that you're not alone, and it is okay we still want to challenge you to take a step of vulnerability and a step um, out of your comfort zone just to be in that space with the Lord. And maybe this morning you can kind of take a step in that direction right now. So we're going to have our ministry team up here at the front and we want to encourage you if you need prayer to come and approach someone on our ministry team to pray with you or to pray for you. Maybe you know that you need to come forward because you need to to step outside of your comfort zone, but you don't necessarily need somebody to pray over you, we just invite you to kneel on one of the rugs or or to come forward. This this space in the front is here not to um, condemn us and not to make us feel like we're less than, but really to open up an opportunity for us to come into God's presence and kind of like we've talked about before, like having our bodies kind of set the tone for what our spirit is doing as well. So please be encouraged and feel free to come forward if that's what your heart is um, moving towards this morning.
God, we thank you that your spirit is here and all around, and that we can join in that work, the work in our own lives and the work of our communities as well. May we see that, and as your kingdom is here, may we be a part of that. Amen. Good morning. Uh, my name is... Good morning, David. Good morning. My name is Tim. My family and I attend the gathering here. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm to do announcements. So we have a few, and then you can go and enjoy the sunshine, because that tells you that the Spirit of the Lord is here today. Um, yes, yes. Um, so you can connect with us as a church. We want to be more connected, um, connected to you and what's happening in your life. And so we have our special number, 765-999. There, there it is. Very good. You can text. There's some keywords you can use. You can use hello, um, Jesus, prayer. You can text other words if you want. Um, but it's a way to connect with the staff um, to let them know that... Um, you have questions, comments, concerns, those kinds of things you want to connect to and learn more. So it's a way to do that. Um, there are four ways to give here at the gathering. Um, Stephanie talked a little bit about the book drive thing that's happening. Um, is that still going on, Stephanie? Yes. yes. So please, continue to be generous. That's kind of a part of our DNA and who we are. 20% of everything you give goes somewhere else. Um, and so it's that money that allows us to support both local work um, regional work and global work to bring the kingdom of God here more and more each day. And so there's lots of ways to do that. There are boxes in the back. Um, you can mail it with a stamp. We still take mail, right? You can go online and do recurring gifts. That's what we do in my family, so it's just easy. Um, and then you can also uh, text if that's how you want to give. Um, we have a digital bulletin, so we're trying to be efficient in communicating with folks. We know especially with summer coming, not everybody will be here all the time. So you can scan the QR code and you can be connected with what's happening, whether you're here or away. Um, we want to be letting you know what's happening in the larger family. And that, that is it. So go forth. The Spirit of God is here. The sun is here. And enjoy your day.